we have this kind of alternative media ecosystem that's kind of driving a lot of disinformation that is not understood by journalists or anyone really. So, and, and to be honest, I don't even think the kind of ecosystem itself, this kind of alternative eco- ecosystem itself, really understands its own nature because it's kind of grown organically rather than being this kind of organised thing. So, they're failing to address. Um, you know, the actual reality of this kind of online alternative media ecosystem and other similar uh, media ecosystems that exist online kind of undermines efforts to counter disinformation. What we have now is a much more complicated landscape where we recognize that some things are outright lies and some things are really, really just a mix of propaganda, opinion, and other types of information that aren't just outright facts. The solution will not necessarily be technological. The most important thing is to really find a way to encourage critical thinking again. What I would love is for people to just take an extra minute before they share something. Stop consuming for just one minute and take a look at what you're looking at and really critically think about it. And that, I think, is one of the few ways that maybe change the impact that misinformation has on people's points of views. Demographic data is the holy grail for journalists. It's why politicians and corporations are willing to splash millions for what is effectively a never-ending spreadsheet. Once we understand how information is targeted and served to a user, and also understand how a user might be broken down into different data points, we essentially would have everything we need to launch an effective counter-misinformation campaign. The ongoing civil unrest in Hong Kong since June 9th created a political environment under which misinformation and disinformation gets produced, believed, and disseminated at an unprecedented volume and speed. I know this sounds unrealistic, but in 2020, I would change the ways in which the internet is governed and regulated globally, so that we have an international system with protocols that aim to safeguard free speech, penalize abuse, and prevent harm no matter where. In addition to the ongoing wave of press censorship, journalists are facing the brunt of insidious digital smear campaigns against them. The online space is shrinking for journalists as propagandists have fast developed a culture where critical reporting is dismissed as an expression of bias, fake news, or negative coverage. That's why people need to become better consumers of information and question everything they find on the internet before believing it. The only way to beat disinformation is by identifying it.